What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. A few weeks ago, I made a video where I talked about the best surround speaker for Dolby Atmos. Is it a traditional surround speaker like I have over here, or should you be using a bookshelf or tower speaker in your Atmos setup? Now, if you didn't go watch that video, definitely go check it out. It is a great video, if I must say so myself. I'll leave a link in the description below, and you can also click on the card up above. But one of the comments, or I guess I got a few comments uh, on that video, but one of them that stood out was, I didn't really talk about the benefits of a surround speaker in that video. And I didn't because honestly, I didn't really think that was the right venue for it, but I am gonna talk about that in this video. What are the benefits of having a surround speaker like this one or this one in your room? Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is the differences between a surround speaker and a traditional speaker like the one I have here. This is the Klipsch RP150M. It is a traditional bookshelf speaker in that it is direct firing or direct radiating. It's got a tweeter and a mid bass woofer down here and they both fire out into the room in that one direction. Over here, I have the Arundel Sound 1723S surround speaker. Now, as you can see, it also has a tweeter and a woofer on the front face that fire outwards, but it also has drivers on each one of these faces that also fire outward, so you get a nice cone of sound kind of coming from this speaker. Now, over here, I've got an even more traditional surround speaker. This is the Klipsch RP402S. It's got two drivers, a tweeter and a woofer on this face, but it also has the same pair, a matching pair of tweeter and woofer on this face, and they fire outward like this. And so you get another cone of sound with this particular speaker. Now, those are the physical differences between the surround speakers and the traditional speaker, but inside the cabinet, the manufacturer also has to make another decision for the surround speaker they need to decide how they're going to make these drivers fire. And there are two ways that they make that they make them do that. Uh, the first is bipole and the second is dipole. With a bipole design, they're going to make the drivers fire at the same time. So the drivers fire outward like this. Whereas with a dipole design, the drivers are going to fire independently of one another, alternating pattern. So it's gonna kind of pump sort of like this right here. And what a dipole design does is it gives you an even more diffuse sound compared to a bipole design. So if you want the ultimate in diffusion, you're gonna be looking for a dipole speaker. But if you're kind of good either way, you can go dipole or bipole, either one. So those are the differences between a surround speaker and a traditional bookshelf speaker. Now let's move on and talk about test setup and the benefits of the surround speaker. I decided to use this Klipsch RP402S as the surround speaker for this test, instead of the Arundel Sound 1723S, mainly because this is a much more traditional design compared to that Arundel, and I have the opportunity to use the RP150Ms as direct firing comparisons, and even my center channel right here, this Klipsch center channel. And I bring that up because I use this surround speaker in a lot of different setups. I use it as a front left and front right, I used it as a center channel, and as obviously as a traditional surround. And doing all of that testing really taught me a lot about what these are best at and what, you know, where they lack. And let's talk about the first major benefit of having a surround speaker. And that is simply the fact that it gives you great ambient sound and you lose the ability to localize the speaker as much compared to its direct radiating brother. So some of you are gonna say, well, I've got a direct radiating speaker and it's got a wide dispersion path. Even if it has a quote unquote wide dispersion path, it's not nearly as wide as this because what happens with a direct radiating speaker is it goes out and then around. So you're still gonna be able to see, or hear rather, <laughs> that sound coming out at you and then it kind of you know hits around. Whereas with a uh, surround speaker like the one I have here is coming out in two directions at the same time. So you lose the ability to localize the speaker in your setup. And that really works really, really well. It does great with ambient sounds. Um, as a front left and front right speaker, I watched the movie, uh, The Italian Job, the 2003 version with Mark Wahlberg. 
And one of the things that I noticed was at the end of that movie, there is a monologue with music playing. And these were front left and front right speakers. And honestly, because there was so much ambience coming from this, when I was using this as my center channel, it seemed like the dialogue was actually just a bit louder. It's like I gave my center channel a bit of a boost because I was able to really focus in on the direct sound coming out of the center channel. Whereas this was just playing that music and it was nice ambient effects. And I actually kind of found that just a little bit surprising, but then I started thinking about it and I realized like, when do you go outside and you're hearing, you know, the birds chirping, the wind's blowing, all of that's going on. If a dog barks, you know, right in front of you or off to a side or something like that, uh, you're going to instantly kind of focus in on that. You're going to focus on in on the direction of that sound. So when you have a directional speaker like this with a couple of ambient speakers playing on the side, it's your mind instantly kind of focuses in on that sound. So I found that to be interesting. It seemed like there was a bit of a volume boost. Now, again, with that same setup, listening to music, quite frankly, you lose pretty much all of your stereo imaging. Uh, vocals are not locked in the center or anything like that because they're kind of coming out in several different directions. So as you move your head you know in the sound space you're kind of hearing sort of different things you also aren't able to hear a lot of the effects um, that you have in movies and even in music as well if you have a hard pan left to right or right to left you can hear that but a lot of the little small directional cues you kind of miss so I do not recommend using these as front left, front right, or even center channel um, speakers at all. Don't use them in your front sound stage, but they work really, really good as surround speakers because they give you such a nice ambient effect and they're not as localized. So that is the first benefit of these speakers. That brings me to the second benefit of these speakers. These are designed to be side surround or even rear surround speakers and manufacturers design them so they are wall mountable. So they give you things like flat backs like you see here. Typically there's no port along the back so that way the sound characteristics don't change when you mount it against the wall and they include mounting hardware like you see here. Now some manufacturers like the uh, 1723S from Arendelle, they have a little cutout down here at the bottom so that your speaker wire can route down there. So they really kind of think about what it's going to be used as and they really make that a priority, which I like. And what that gives us is it gives us a nice clean theater because they are mounted against the wall. You don't have to worry about speaker stands and stuff like that. But that also brings me to the third benefit of these speakers, and that is they are much more tolerable in certain situations. For some of us, our side surround speakers are right on axis, right in line with uh, the seating position. And what that means is sometimes you may have a direct radiating speaker firing directly into a listener's ear for that person that's sitting on the end. And that can be really loud. Well, if you have a speaker like this, one of these surrounds, it's actually firing out. So it's not firing directly in your ear and it's much more tolerable for that person that is sitting on the end. So that's another good benefit of going with this in your theater if your speakers have to be directly in line. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, just move the speaker one way or the other. Well, sometimes that's not always practical. So it's nice to be able to have a speaker that doesn't fire directly in someone's ear. So there you have it. Three reasons why you should consider purchasing a surround speaker for your theater. It has much better ambient effects, less likely to localize the sound because of the way it's designed. It's easy to mount on the wall. You don't have to worry about speaker stands um, if you mount it directly on the wall. And it's actually a better experience for those that are closest to the wall, especially compared to a direct radiating speaker firing directly in their ear. So these are great speakers. I don't wanna say they're not, but they are for very specific uses. I do not recommend them for uses as a front soundstage. Fun to play with, fun to experiment with, but I definitely don't recommend it because you just lose a lot of effects and directions and stuff like that. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit us up with a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I upload new content. Please use those links to purchase your next pair of speakers or whatever you wanna purchase. Thank you for watching, I'll talk to you next time.